Hey guys, Richard Holdner here and welcome to the channel. We all know that when you go looking for more power from your LS motor, one of the first things we do is a camshaft upgrade. And when we do a camshaft upgrade, we also do a valve spring upgrade. But that leads me to this question. Does the increase in valve spring pressure actually cost any power? In this video, we're going to perform not one, but two different back-to-back -back valve spring tests. So we're going to compare the factory LS3 valve springs to a set of 26918 comp cams beehive springs, and then we're going to compare those 26918 beehive springs to a set of 660 dual springs from Brian Tooley Racing. So the question is, as we go up in spring rate, does it cost us any power? Let's find out. To find out if there's any change in power with a valve spring upgrade, we set up the following test. We compare the factory LS3 valve spring to a set of 26918 Beehive upgrade springs from Comp Cams. And we did this test on an LS3 crate motor. However, it was not completely stock. It had the stock short block, it had the stock camshaft. We ran it with long tube headers. We ran it with no accessories, just an electric water pump. We ran it with a Holly HP management system. But the cylinder heads and the intake manifold were actually slightly modified. Not that it makes any difference for this test because all we did was do a back-to-back -back test on the valve strings. But the cylinder head had been milled slightly. It had been treated to a custom multi-angle valve job and even a little bit of bowl blending in it. The intake manifold actually was also modified a little bit. It was port matched to knock out the rough edges and the same thing in the throttle body inlet. So this thing actually made a little bit more power than most crate LS3 crate motors that we run with the factory camshaft. But run in this configuration with the stock LS3 LS3 valve springs that came with the crate motor. This combination produced 516 horsepower and 501, 500.7 foot pounds of torque. And here's what happened after we upgraded the valve springs, and that's the only change that we made, upgraded the valve springs with the Comp 26918 dual or Beehive valve springs. We did see a little bit of a change in power. The stiffer springs, the stiffer spring upgrade offered by Comp Cams on the Beehives actually reduced power, not by a lot, just a little bit. The peak was only down to 512 horsepower, so you're talking about just a couple of horsepower. We only saw a change in power from 5500 on up. Below that, there was really no change. It was The change wasn't any different than we would see in like a back-to-back -back test. But there did see, seem to be a change in power at the top of the RPM range from the change in valve spring, going from the stock LS3 spring to the Beehive spring. But now let's take a look at the a comparison between the Beehive spring and the dual spring from Brian Tooley Racing. But before we do that, we made a change to this motor so that we could use the bigger springs with more camshaft. Some guys might be wondering, why would you do a valve spring upgrade on a combination equipped with a stock LS3 camshaft? And the reasoning is fairly simple. We actually wanted to do a test with more camshaft but the stock LS3 valve springs will only accept about up to 550 lift of the stock camshaft. That's because they'll run into coil bind at about 600 lift. So somewhere between the 550, 560, 570 is the go, no go range for that factory spring. And it doesn't have a lot of seat pressure or open pressure or rate. So you can't really run a lot of camshaft with a factory valve spring. So I ran that test with the stock springs and the beehive springs as an upgrade with the factory camshaft. But ultimately we wanted to do a valve spring test with much more camshaft and that's exactly what we did here. So this was our combination with the stock camshaft and the stock intake manifold. And to run our next test, comparing the 26918 Beehive spring to the 660 dual platinum spring from Brian Tooley Racing, we did it with a combination that could better take advantage of the additional spring rate. So we wanted to have more camshaft in it. So that's exactly what we did. And here's what happened when we did our upgrade. Basically, we, we changed the camshaft and the intake manifold. For our camshaft, we installed a crane cam, and it was a 624-590 lift split a 232 to 48 degree duration split and 114 degree lobe separation angle. We also equipped this with a short runner sniper style intake manifold. So here's a good little quiz for you guys and let me know in the comments what you guys think. We obviously made a lot more power. The peak power jumped up to 590 horsepower, although peak torque was actually down um, to 492 foot pounds from about 502 foot pounds. And here's my question. Did the drop in low speed power, I mean, this thing made less power basically below 5,500 or 5,400. Did it come from the bigger camshaft or did it all come from the intake manifold? 
So let me know in the comments what you think. Did you think that the big cam hurt low speed power? Or do you think that the short runner intake manifold hurt low speed power? I've got the answer here in another test, and we'll take a look at that before we get to our valve spring test on this combination. But let's first find out off on a little tangent here what lost all the power. Before getting to our results on the Beehive versus the dual spring, did you guys take a guess and figure out what you thought lost the power? Was it the camshaft or the intake manifold? I have the answer for you right here, and actually it's the intake manifold. Short runner intake manifolds, as always, as we have shown on this channel time and time again, lose low speed power compared to the longer ones. And we know, even though we made two changes on that motor, that that's a fact, that the camshaft didn't lose any power. And I know that because I've run a back-to-back -back test previously on a bone stock LS that had no mods on it, um, comparing the factory LS3 camshaft that already had a, uh, the, and the heads already had a valve spring upgrade, comparing the factory camshaft to that exact same crane camshaft. And here's what happened when we did that comparison. So that's the factory LS3 cam, and that's the crane cam. So on the factory LS3 cam, we made 496 horsepower and 491 foot-pounds. Again, bone stock LS3, no changes to the head, no milling, no porting, no changes to the intake. Had a 90 millimeter throttle body on. It had slightly smaller long tube headers, inch and three quarters. And just putting the camshaft in up the power to 567 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 517 foot-pounds. And the most important thing is you can see it basically gained power everywhere, which is something that we see is fairly normal on these two low 230, mid to high 240 camshafts on an LS3. They'll accept a lot of camshaft and works very well. And because they have enough displacement and compression and stuff, they tend to not lose a lot of low speed power, even with that's kind of getting near the biggest type of cams that you can fit with a factory piston to valve clearance on an otherwise stock LS3. We obviously had to do a valve spring upgrade on this, which we did, which we did prior to the test because we knew that we were going to be putting this camshaft in. But the losses that we saw before were basically only due to the short runner intake manifold. Those sniper intake manifolds will can pick up power at the very top of the RPM range, but you're going to trade through most of the curve. In this case, if you take a look at any of the videos I have up comparing that intake manifold to a factory LS3, you'll see it loses power all the way to 6,000 or so. And then if you really want to rev the thing, you can pick up power past that. So now let's take a look at what happened when we compare our final test. The comp 26918 bi spring to the dual 660 you know a dual spring upgrade these were from brian tooley racing your typical dual spring upgrade that we always do for an ls cam swap after taking a look at the change in power between the factory LS3 valve spring and the comp 26918 beehive spring, and then going off on our tangent on the intake and the camshaft, we can now take a look at the final test, and that's where we compared the comp 26918 beehive spring to a set of dual springs. In this case, they were from Brian Tooley Racing, and they were their, their 660 Platinum springs. A common upgrade, if you're going to put a good size camshaft in, a lot of guys will go to the dual spring upgrade, and that camshaft would allow 650 lift or something else although we didn't have anywhere near that much in our camshaft. But here's what happened when we went from the Beehive spring and then installed the dual spring from Brian Tooley. We basically had no change in power. I mean, they were basically a direct overlay. So we saw a little bit of a change go initially going to the Beehive spring and then no change from the Beehive to the dual spring. So it looks like with the dual spring, you're not going to sacrifice any power when you do your cam upgrade. But one of the things that I wanted to do is I wanted to include the, the actual valve spring pressures of all these so you guys could get an idea of what the difference was. Now, the factory LS3 valve spring offered 90 pounds of seat pressure and 295 pounds of open pressure, and that's at 550 lift. The reason for that is they coil bind about 600 plus or minus a little bit, so we couldn't really get a number at 600 valve lift. The 26918 Beehive spring upgrade from Comp Cams, uh, theirs was registered at 125 pounds of seat pressure and 367 pounds of open pressure, and that's at 650 valve lift. Whereas the dual spring from Brian Tooley Racing sets up at 155. And again, this depends on your, um, your installed height. These are all taken at 1-800. 155 pounds of seat pressure 
and 400 pounds of open pressure. And again, that was at 650 valve lift. So we can see the difference between the various springs. Um, you know, and there's about 30 pounds difference on the seat between the beehive and the dual spring. And there is 35 pounds of seat pressure difference between the LS3 spring and the, and the beehive spring. But relatively speaking, from a percentage standpoint, that is actually a bigger percentage of the original 90 from the LS3 spring. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what did we learn from our valve spring comparison on our LS3? We compared the factory LS3 valve springs to the CompCam 26918 Beehive springs and then compared those Beehive springs to the 660 Dual Platinum springs from Brian Tooley Racing. And here's what most people tend to think when you talk to them about a valve spring upgrade and the power associated with that. They think that there should be no change in power. And if you think about it, their logic is actually fairly sound. So when we compress the spring and open the valve, it takes a certain amount of power to do that obviously. Now that spring has stored energy and it, it supplies that stored energy back to the motor when the valve closes, right? Well, we know that that happens. That's not really the question. The question is, is the amount of power supplied when we compress the spring and the amount of power supplied back from the spring, is it the same? Let me know in the comments. Our mentor holder, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.